Free throw. He missed them both. We are still waiting to ascertain the start of the third game. Did you hear that? Oh. 7.59. Okay. Yep. We now have a 7.59 tip for Purdue Grambling State. 7.59 tip, Purdue Grambling State.
Who we got? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> okay. Again, a reminder in the work area, Colorado, the winning team will come in first. We will have a coach and two student athletes and our approximate interview time will be 12 minutes. Just a reminder, our satellite coordinates for the site are SES3, transponder 17, slot B as a boy 9, downlink 12,035.5 horizontal, date rate 11.914, symbol 7.2. And please refer any questions about satellite coordinates uh, to the re representatives in the back of the room from Hammond Communications Group. Game four tonight will not start till about 10 30, quarter of 11. <laughs> well, it's going to be a long night. Three players. All right. Eddie. Eddie Lampley. Justin De Silva. And two uh, Simpsons. And who? Oh, KJ Simpson? KJ Simpson? Our three Colorado players will be K.J. Simpson, Tristan Da Silva, and Eddie Lampkin, Jr. They're on their way, Bill. And Colorado is on its way. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Way to go, Eddie. Thank you. You're a stud, man. Appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> 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 I ain't been
right here in a minute. Oh. <laughs> Coach Kelly? As soon as coach gets here, we'll yeah, start. Boy, yeah, right. 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 yeah, that is me. Congratulations, <laughs> Bro, that was calling some bulls. Oh, we'll start with an opening comment. And then okay. we'll oh, oh. Oh. <coughs> Chill out, coach. All right, we are joined by the Colorado Buffaloes, and Coach Boyle will make an opening statement, and then we'll go to questions for anybody that's up here on the dais. So, coach? Well, God, <laughs> can't ask for much more out of a game in March than, than the one you just saw. I mean, these guys, the way they battled, I thought, I thought both teams battled. I mean, hats off to Florida. They played well. And, uh, but man, to show the poise and composure that we, we did down the stretch when they, they made the run back at us, uh, it was a tough, tough game. And uh, I, I thought to myself at halftime, if we don't start guarding better, uh, midway through the second half, if we don't start guarding better, we got to score 100 to win tonight. And, we needed 102. Actually, only needed 101, but we got 102. So just enough at the end. Great execution. Great play by KJ. Every one of our players that played made plays. Um, bench was great. Uh, just a hell of a game in March. What, what else can you say? All right, questions, please. Raise your hand. State your name and affiliation, and we'll right here. Jesse Temple, The Athletic. KJ, can you take us through the last play and how that sequence unfolded? Question for KJ. Yeah, um, I mean, we always, you know, go through preparation, time and score uh, situations like that in practice. And uh, it was just another one of those times where we had to execute. Obviously, we, it was a play that was set up. It was multiple actions out of it. Happened to break free and uh, was looking to just drive, create something, whatever was the best play. And uh, noticed the defender got a little bit off balance. And, you know, that's a shot I shoot a bunch of times. And, you know, cred credit to, you know, my teammates. And, you know, Cody threw me a great pass that was able to guide me and lead me in that direction and just stepping up and hitting the, hitting the shot. Question right here. Ben Baby with ESPN. Uh, Tad, walk us through kind of what happened there at the end of the second half. Uh, you know, what kind of enabled them to get back into it and, and what, did you, what, were you able, what did you say to them into that timeout uh, going into that last possession? Well, look, I mean, we, were, we went with a small lineup just because we knew they were going to try to get threes and, and really put pressure off, you know, off on us off the dribble. And we, we didn't do a great job down the stretch. Now, again, you got to credit Florida, and they drew some fouls. Um, that was, look, that was, a, that was a tough game to officiate. I mean, there was, uh, we were going downhill, they were going downhill. I mean, it, was, it, it really was. So, um, but, but I thought we didn't do a great job of guarding them off the bounce. They got some and ones. We wanted to take away threes. That's one of the reasons we went small, so we could switch everything. But, um, you know, they, they kept coming, and we, we, weren't, we weren't great. Had one big turnover there in the press offense. But our guys kept their composure. In terms of the last play, last time out, like KJ said, we, we, we go through those plays. Um, you know, we don't always need them, but you have to have them in your bag when you're ready. And that was a play where we try to get him an ISO drive with six seconds to go with Eddie at the rim to clean things up. And, uh, and then Tr Tristan and Javon, you know, got two-man action up top. So if that's not there, there's the next option. And, and have Cody take it out that made that read because he could have easily, KJ wasn't originally open, and then he came back to him. So credit to him, like, like KJ said. So all, all five guys got to do their job in those, in those situations, and they all did. Right here, please. Steven Johnson, Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Question for Eddie. Um, Eddie went through a lot last year with your family, ex from TCU. How special is this moment, being back in the NCAA tournament, scoring 21 points, one win away from the Sweet 16 for you? Uh, it feels good. I was blessed to find a, somewhere I can call home real quick. I told Coach and KJ, me and KJ have been having a relationship for the last two years, and I was telling them I'd love to play with you one day. And that was just, at the beginning of the season, I just told them that. And then when I got in the portal, I hit up Coach, and he was like, I love to have you, and now look where we at. And I'm just feel I'm just so blessed to be in this position, and we got to keep winning. We ain't satisfied yet. Right, right here. Hi, Ryland Scholes with Ralphie Report. Under Tad, you guys have had you've built kind of a legacy of producing great point guards with guys like Spencer and McKinley and Derek, and now KJ after that buzzer beater, you know, you kind of cement yourself on that Mount Rushmore of Colorado point guards. What does that mean to you? Um, first of all, I appreciate the compliment. Uh, that's, 
I mean, that's that's just that's real special. You know, obviously, I'm grateful to be here. You know, uh, given you know that recruiting process and everything. You know, having Colorado to call home, like Eddie said, you know, it's real special. Been here for three years, and you know, having to fill tough roles and tough shoes. You know, with previous guards that have been excellent under Coach Boyle, and uh, credit to those guys. You know, they reach back out, and they're just great advisors and great role models for me, and um, always give me advice and have helped me, you know, be in this position. But I feel like ultimately, you know, I just I'm so grateful to be around this team. You know, my team is the reason that I have so much success. You know, they find me when I'm open. I mean, they always encourage me when I have off games. Um, so just to be in the conversation with those guys that you named, um, it's just real special, and I'm thankful. We're going to go right here, and then we'll come to you, Pat. Hey, hey, Tad, right. you guys are on quite a hot streak. Jake Shapiro from Denver Sports. Tad, you guys are on quite a hot streak here down the stretch, and uh, you're showing a level of basketball where you continue to fight in games. What kind of changed midway through the season the last 10 games where you guys kind of turned that round mentality-wise where you continue to just bring that level up even in those down moments? I don't know, Jake. You know, it's a, it's a long season, and, and the one thing as a coach, you know when you've done it, uh, for 30 years, like I have as an assistant or a head coach, is uh, especially sometimes at, at the level we play in the Pac-12, a Power Five conference, you know, so much scrutiny is given to the November games and December games, and that's just part of it. But you can't lose sight of the fact that you just have to keep concentrating on getting better and better and better. And sometimes you can put so much pressure on those games. And maybe as a coach, I put too much pressure on them. I don't know, but I, I, I do know this. We kept talking about, guys, we got to keep getting better. And to these guys' credit, that's what they did. And, and, and I've known in practice that we've had a very competitive group all year. I've seen it, you know, every single day. These guys are what I call everyday guys. They come to the gym to try to get better. And, uh, you know, looking back, you know, that UCLA game in Pauly where we lost a really tough game was, uh, was a heartbreaker. These guys were down. They felt like their backs were against the wall. And, they came out fighting two nights later against SC and won a double overtime game on the road against a really talented team. And that gave us some confidence. It gave us a little spark. And we've, uh, we've just been on a roll ever since. Right here, Pat. Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated for Eddie and for Tad. You've, you've played a lot of college basketball. You've coached a lot of college basketball. What was 102 to 100 in an elimination game like? Eddie, we'll start with you. Uh. <clears throat> I would really just say I, I'm used to pa playing fast, so it was like I just felt comfortable. When I was at TCU, we was the number one transition team every year. I was there except my freshman year. So a high-scoring game is, is really just another game to me. And we didn't have that many in the last couple games because we've been playing a lot in the half court. But Coach told us they was going to try to outscore us, and we had to defend, and that's what we did. Coach? Yeah, look, I mean, we, we play at a mile high, you know. And uh, so we always want to play fast. We love to get out and run. And uh, uh, we're a good transition team when we get stops. Unfortunately, tonight we were taking the ball out of the net a lot, which is a little bit more difficult. But we still want to push the pace. And Florida did the same thing. So uh, we anticipated a game like this. But the, the one thing about these games, you better keep scoring the ball. <laughs> you better keep scoring it. You better be efficient. I haven't had a chance to really look at our second half. I know in the first half, we shot 60% from the field. We had 14 assists on 17 baskets. And you go in the locker room like that, you expect to be up 10 or 15. And it's a tie score because we couldn't stop them. So um, just got to keep scoring <laughs> in games like that. You got to, it's the bottom line. I mean, it's not what we want to talk about and do, but that's what we had to do tonight to win. We did. We're going to go right here. Yeah, a question for Coach Boyle. Along that point, Walter Clayton in particular, I think he had. 16 of the last points, 33. Yeah. What made him a particularly kind of tough cover all night for you guys? Well, they, they run good action for him. Um, he's a really – he's got a quick release. He's got great balance in his shot. I mean, he's, he's one of those guys that's better in person than when you watch him on film. He's a good player. And uh, I thought, you know, KJ made some – I thought he was right there a lot of times. We were right there a lot. He just made some tough shots. That last three at the end, I don't think it was bad defense. It was just, you know, he came down and raised. And he, he's a good player. And, you know, you get into this tournament, the deeper you get in, you'll be playing against better teams and better players. And, and Florida, you can see why they had a lot of success this year. But um, our, guys, our guys battled their tails off. This, this team, 
knows how to win in different ways. And we just proved that over the last two games. Now, I don't know anything about Marquette and what we got in front of us. We'll, we'll figure that out tonight. Um, but whatever it is, we'll, we'll be able to compete because this is a competitive group and, and uh, uh, we're, we're happy to be moving on. We're going to right here. Scott Proctor to Colorado and Grass on the win, y'all. Eddie, uh, man, how did those chants from the fans, Eddie, man, how does it feel hearing that? And do you feel like you were, you were brought to Colorado for moments for games like this, like today? Uh, yeah, for sure. God put me here for a reason, but I'm used to that. I don't even hear it half the time now. I just, I just get going, and I can make one layup, ten layups. They showing support, and that's shout out to Buff Nation. They showing us love, and that's all you can ask for at the end of the day. Right, right here. For the players, Pat Rooney from the Boulder Daily Camera. Um, what is it? Tad just alluded to this. Yeah. But what does it say about your group that you can win? that kind of rugged battle that you did a couple days ago and turn around and win a game like this? Tristan? Uh, yeah, we're a really tight group. Uh, we love playing with each other. We love hanging out around each other. Um, you know, we, as I said, we're a really tight group. We love each other. Um, you know, we, we fight out, out there for each other. So I feel like it shows on the court, you know, the, the hustle plays, the, the, the extra efforts, um, playing together, moving the ball. Um, and we trust each other. I've been I've been talking about trust a lot um, these past couple of weeks, and you know that's what it ultimately comes down to. KJ, you want? Um, yeah, you know, credit to the teams we've played against. You know, everybody around this time of year is you know is difficult in their own way, and they all have their strengths. And uh, you know, it's just tough, rugged teams. Uh, great players on both sides. Um, you know, in Boise State, and then obviously you know playing Florida. I mean, couldn't credit you know. Zion and Walter enough, you know, those are great guards to, up to go up against and have nothing but respect for them. But ultimately, you know, we've shown that we can compete, you know, with any team in the country. And uh, something that, that's never questionable within this team is our fight. And we're going to keep fighting until the end. And, um, you know, we would not like to, you know, be in those type of situations. But, um, you know, we're more than prepared, you know, to be ready for whatever happens with this group. Got time for a couple more right here question for coach. I'm just curious, what has Eddie brought to your program as both a player and a person? I'm glad you asked that. Uh, he's brought unbelievable toughness, uh, uh, a spirit, a competitive spirit, um, energy. Uh, he's brought so much to this team. Uh, toughness. Um, our guys believe in him. He believes in them. It's been, you know, like he said, it's you, you get somebody for just one year that kind of has to fit in with guys like Tristan Akeji, who've been here for three and four years. He he fit in like a glove. So he's unselfish. He's a fast pass first big, and my man was five for five from the foul line tonight. And to see him put in the work and see him succeed, because that's something he struggled with in the past. But you know, I don't I don't even think about him missing free throws. I expect him to go in now, and I think he does too. But I'm really really proud of him. Appreciate that, Coach. Last question right here. Hey, Tristan, you, you've heard the coaching staff and the, the program preach fundamentals of defense and rebounding over and over. This was the first tournament game in 20 years where both teams scored over 100 points. Um, for you guys to win a game like that, what does that say about your team and the ability to score the basketball? Uh, yeah, I mean, as Coach said, you know, this, this group kind of figured out different ways to, to win games. Um, you know, this time it was, you know, kind of outscoring the opponent. Um, we, we, we would like to not be in situations like that because um, we pride ourselves on, on defense and rebounding. Um, you know, and as I said, we just, we just figured out different ways. We got really talented guys on this team. Um, and once again, we, we got the ultimate trust in each other. Thank you, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Yeah. 
Gotcha. Are we are about to be joined by Florida. Coach, we will open uh, with an opening statement from you, and then we'll take questions for anyone that's up here on the dais. So, Coach? Yeah, incredibly proud of my team. I thought uh, they, they've been great for us all year, and uh, you know today was no different. Obviously, we didn't defend the way we needed to to give ourselves a great chance to win, but uh, on the glass and uh, offensively, I thought we did a pretty good job most of the game, and uh, proud of the way we responded going down 10 in the second half. Uh, or we're down 13 with 5.23 to go. And uh, like all year, this group stayed the course, stayed together, kept fighting, found a way to tie that thing up late. And, uh, you know, one possession away from getting that thing to overtime. And um, disappointed because this group uh, had the ability to, to make a little bit of a run. We got a tough draw getting Colorado in this game. You know, they're 21st overall in Kempom. No other 10 seeds above 33rd. And, uh, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. But uh, they're a very good team. Um, you know, I, I expect them to play Marquette very well on Sunday. Please raise your hand and name your affiliation. And right here in front. Yep. So when you guys rallied there at the end, what was the message to your guys, and what do you feel like they did to tie it up? Obviously, we just got a little more aggressive defensively. We probably, I probably should have uh, got us in that a little earlier, but um, you know. With that being said, I just, again, thought they kept their composure really well. And, uh, you know, even though we were down a little bit and we were struggling, our guys weren't hanging their heads. They were staying positive and staying together. And uh, obviously, we pressured them. They were throwing the ball around a little bit. We hit some big shots, did a good job attacking the rim. Um, and then obviously, Walt hit a huge three to tie that thing up. But again, same story as all year. You know, our team's been pretty resilient. And, uh, you know, for us to cut that thing and tie it, being down 13, I'm really proud of the way we responded. We're here. Yeah, uh, Todd, Ben Baby with ESPN. Just walk us through what you saw on that final possession and how that unfolded for Colorado. Uh, you know, I saw them throw it into Simpson. And, uh, you know, I thought ZP did an incredible job staying down and staying between him and the basket. And, uh, you know, Simpson somehow got about five feet of separation uh, off ZP and uh, made a really tough, skilled shot from the baseline. But again, I thought ZP did his job, stayed in legal guarding position, stayed between the ball and the basket. And uh, you know, again, somehow Simpson just created about seven feet of separation to get that shot off. Well, that that being said, are you surprised at kind of how that that unfolded, given how many fouls were called in the second half combined? Not at all. Why is that? I uh, I just wasn't surprised that that wasn't called. Right here. For the players, uh, for Zion and and Tyrese especially, can you sum up what this what this game kind of means? It kind of sum up. This run you guys made and just being being Gators, you know. Zion. Yeah, it was special. Uh, you know, I appreciate this coaching staff and these players for uh, you know embracing me. Um, season didn't go, uh, finish the way you know we anticipated, but um, you know I can't be more thankful to you know put this jersey on. Um, and, you know, definitely some we'll, we'll learn from um, and you know get better from. Tyrese. Uh, yeah, same here. So I just can't like. Can't thank the coaches enough for bringing this group together. We had a run. We had a great run. Obviously, a lot of people didn't want us here in March Madness. They didn't think we thought we were going to finish ninth in the SEC, and we finished, what, sixth or whatever the case was. But obviously, it's not the finish we wanted. But I think we we put on for Florida, and we put Florida back on a map. And this is the foundation that's set, and the standards are only going to get better from here. Right here. Shepard with WFT News. Losses like this can be kind of tough, especially when you come back from a deficit and you close it and you kind of feel the glory coming to you. But how do you keep your heads up and still praise yourselves and all the accomplishments that you've had this season? This is a question for the players. Question for the players. Yeah, Will. 
Um, yeah, it's definitely um, a tough loss for us, but uh, nobody thought we'd get it, uh, get to this point. So, I mean, we're, we're still proud of each other, proud of this group. Um, and just you know, just keep our head up, um, improve from it and stuff like that. But definitely still uh, look at the brighter side. Uh, nobody expected us to get here and uh, proud of this group, and we did make it this far. So it's something to definitely hang your head up high on. Tyrese, you want to take it? Uh, yeah, just to pick it back on what he said, like, obviously it's not the finish that we wanted, but we've been through so much this year. You can only smile at that. And, you know, obviously it's not the result we wanted. We lost off a game winner, but that doesn't matter at the end of the day. Like, we had – sometimes we were the winning uh, – team so it happens sometimes but you know basketball is it's bound to happen you know what I mean so I don't know I'm just happy with what our team did this year can't really complain uh, you know they'll be back next year and they'll be a lot better so I'm just excited to see what's yet to come for obviously the seniors and the players for next year as well right here Todd you're not a coach that gets a lot of teed up much uh, what happened on, on that sequence and with the whistle and how frustrating was that yeah, uh, just a confusing situation. Um, you know, a very delayed and one call. Uh, and then, you know, explain that he tried to blow his whistle, but his whistle wasn't working. But nobody saw him call foul until about five seconds after the play. Uh, I, I wasn't very happy about it. I thought it was really just, it's never happened to me in my coaching career. Uh, where somebody's whistle doesn't work, and then you know, five seconds later, we're finding out that it's an one. Uh, and then he asked me to get in the box, and I said I was in the box, and then he gave me technical. So um, he's, I've had three technicals in my coaching career. He's, he has given me two of them. So follow up, uh, career high, 33 points from Walter tonight. Just what do you think about his performance, and and how much can he, you know, be something to build on next year if he decides to come back? Yeah, no, he's well, you know, is a fantastic player. Uh, got a lot of heart, got a lot of belief. Uh, along with these three up here, you know, he was, uh, he's, he believed the whole time that we'd get back in the game. Did a great job attacking the rim late, obviously hit that big three uh, to tie it up. And, uh, you know, I, he's, he's a stud, man. He's a gator, and uh, we're fortunate to have him. Right here. Uh, Bennett Solomon with the Alligator. Um, obviously, with everything that's happened with this team, is this the closest team? Uh, this is a question for all of you. Is this the closest team you've been a part of? Or, and, you know, how close, really, is this team? Zion, we'll start with you. Uh, i definitely say uh, it's probably the closest team I've been on. Um, you know, from the stuff, you know, on the court to, you know, off the court, guys just want to be around each other. Um, you know, something that stands out. And, uh, you know, I can't thank these guys enough, uh, you know, for just, like I said earlier, just embracing me. Um, you know, got a bunch of great guys on this team. And, um yeah, I'd say we're pretty connected. Coach? Yeah, th this team is fantastic that way. I feel like uh, our, our team talent is really good. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be around a lot of teams that get along well. You know, I thought my last team in San Francisco was great that way. We had great camaraderie, great togetherness. And uh, this team has reminded me a lot of that group in the way uh, they're together, you know, um, they don't have to force it. They don't have to manufacture it. These guys enjoy being around each other. Uh, and it's part of why we've been so successful this year. And so we'll continue to, uh, my hope is that it'll continue to be that way as this, as this group grows and as our program grows. But these guys have laid a great foundation for us that way, for sure. Time for a few more, we're going to right here. Um, congratulations on making it this far and playing in a really tough game today. Um, my name is Jayla Johnson with IEPUI Sports Capital Journalism. Um, Alex. Condon, he did not play like a freshman tonight. Can you just explain um, your feelings towards his performance tonight, especially up against a big matchup with Eddie? Yeah, he, you know what? He's uh, He's been huge for us all year. Uh, he's come off the bench, but he, along with Tommy, uh, you know, have been right there with Reese and, and Micah as super important players for us, especially in the front court. And, you know, obviously kind of thrust into a tough situation getting his first start in an NCAA tournament game. But, you know, we knew, and I think these guys, would agree that, that he'd be ready to compete and ready to fight. Um, it's one of his best qualities as a player. And, uh, you know, he fouled out, but six points, seven rebounds, six assists, only one turnover. I thought he did a good job uh, out there battling a super old, you know, fifth year senior in Lampkin who's a really good player. Right here. Darren Stoltz with Western News Orlando. Todd, just watching this team battle back like they have in times past, how much did you just think, oh, we, we got this? And then, Walking off the floor, how much of a building block can this still be as you move forward? 
Yeah, I mean, along with these guys, I always believed we had a chance. You know, it wasn't looking great for a while. Uh, but once we pressured them a little bit, they started throwing it around. I felt like if we could make some shots, that we'd give ourselves a chance. And uh, again, we, we did what we needed to do, obviously, to tie the game. And I thought we had a pretty good defense possession on the last possession. And it just didn't go our way. So uh, really proud of where this program is right now. The the way this team's played all year. Uh, you know, 24 wins in our league is really hard to do. And, uh, you know, we obviously had 14 league wins if you combine the regular season in the SEC tournament. And that's something to be super proud of. And, and like Tyree said, my hope is that this will be a building block for the program. You know, um, we're going to miss ZP and Tyrese a lot. They're going to be hard to replace. Um, but, you know, the goal is that these younger guys will continue to grow and get better. And we'll find guys that uh, are the right fit with great attitudes and great work ethics and really want to be Gators. And uh, we'll continue to build it that way. Uh, because that's what I believe in, and it's worked for us. So uh, a good building block season for us, and our hope is to continue to raise the bar as we move forward. Time for a couple more right in the back. Is, uh, for Zion. Zion, do you think you, you got a little bit of a shoulder on that last play into maybe one of the other players? Was it kind of difficult to get a feel of the game, the way the game was being called, especially when whistles aren't working? Uh, I mean, just trying to, you know, Keep playing the game, uh, you know, and let the, the fouls kind of come. But, uh, I mean, just just some tough plays, uh, you know, down the stretch and, you know, getting started and stuff like that. But um, I don't know what happens, basketball. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Last question, please. Question for the players. Being here is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You have a lot of young basketball stars looking up to you, even in moments of losing and not coming out with the win. Do you have any advice for them and just anything you've learned in these moments? Tyrese, start with you. Uh, yeah, just just got to accept it sometimes. You know what I mean? Uh, sometimes it's not always not going to go your way. And there's always going to be a lot of basketball to be played. Like, we have a lot of freshmen and sophomores. And if they all decide to stay together, they're going to be great in the long run. And it's just going to help Florida basketball grow. Um, like from Kondo Ha, even Walt, Will, Will, all of them, like this team is going to be great next year as long as they just add the right pieces. I think they could make a, a bigger run than we did this year. So I'm excited to see that. Will? Um, yeah, I agree with what Tari said. Um, just don't take any game for granted. I mean, it's a blessing being able to play a game that you love and a game that you dream of playing, especially at this level. So um, just have fun with it. Um, just take take every game, every every workout, just everything. Um, and cherish it because uh, the basketball doesn't uh, lie. It doesn't dribble uh, for a long time. So just enjoy it while you can. Zion? Yeah, I mean, kind of kind of what you said, just cherishing it all. Um, you know, you're not promised, you know, um, you know, to keep playing and stuff like that. So I think just cherishing every single day, just keep showing up, um, just keep working, uh, you know, because it all comes to an end, uh, you know, especially, um, you know, it goes by pretty fast. So I think just you know, embracing every single day and uh, just keep working. Thank you, Florida. Thank you. Just a reminder that the Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. -E and transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly and available in the back of the room. Thanks for joining us. And 759 tip. I assume they did. Not here. Yeah. <clears throat> what do we got? Twenty till two. Uh, we have nineteen, 19 minutes still to. Hey. 
Hey, how are you? Uh, I'm fine. Did you go to uh, a little bit? I just finished the second game post press conference. So, Purdue, Purdue. <laughs> here's the deal.